there's been a few people who um, ordered Pi Pico and the Pi Pico itself as long as you can get it for reasonable postage is quite cheap about three four pounds what's that five dollars six dollars and that's quite cheap but then these displays i think this was about 15 pound 12 to 15 pound uk and then this pico explorer was um, a lot more i think this and a, a pico set me back about 22 23 pounds something like that so um these peripherals aren't that cheap but i thought it would be nice to uh, go back to basics a little bit and not do something about a Pimeroni peripheral this time but do something uh, with a much cheaper OLED display a generic Arduino display it's a I squared C uh, whatever that means <laughs> I think this works the same way as these if these if these are I squared C then we should be able to get this working so on the screen you can see some generic code that I've seen on the internet. There's in some of the bits of code we've seen uh, from machine. We know that works within uh, MicroPython. I've seen it do import that before. This is it's a Python library that drives an OLED display, a standard OLED display. This is only a black and white one. I think this one's blue. Um, it's not color, but let, let's see whether we can get this working. I've got to wire this up first. Now um, this uses a ground a voltage then the clock and the data lines there's not really much information on it other than that i was going to do it on this to start with but i don't want to because i want to go go cheaper so let's pop that in there just so that i can get hold of those pins and i'm going to take one of my um, picos in fact let's take this one off my board Um, and just pop it somewhere on on here there's lots of on the underside of it there's all of the pinouts so I need to uh, make reference to that so I'm just going to wait a little bit before I plug it into this board but um, I didn't show you on the underside of this this is really useful um, some amusing things on this I do love their humor I was what I was thinking made in Sheffield why has it got Chinese on it and I put that into Google Translate and it and it, it tries to say Pi Moroni. <laughs> it says pirate and sailing and all manner of things. Hilarious watching that. Looking at these pinouts, we've got this I squared C data and I squared C SCL. That's pins 20 and 21. In this code, well, SCL is pin 22. So it should be 21 for this one. The data is on pin 20. So see, there's a relationship between these pins here and the general input output pins. And also on this board, you can access those pins here. But we've got to find out where these pins are on this, which is going to be quite good, quite good fun for me and my eyesight. But uh, we've got a ground there. And then we've got 21 and 20. And so it's just then finding where the power comes out. And the power is about there. That pin there is the ground, which is this pin. If I pop it on there for the moment, and I'm going to get a black cable to try and say that is the ground. And then next to it was the clock and the data. Keep that one. I haven't got all the right colours. Well, let's just do do clock and data the next two along clock data was the end one and clock was that one you don't need breadboard for this either you can you could wire it up directly if you wanted so and let's put the ground on there now hopefully that's all correct um i'm just going to put that in there temporarily to hold the space at the end of the board and i'm just going to have a look again and try and find the three volts so the 3.3 volts is one two three four five it's the fifth pin along all right so I put that back there the fifth pin along one two four five all right so put that in the board now then that should be able to go across there to the voltage one I'm just going to plug this in first and just check that everything's okay 
this may be the video where I blow up my first Pipeka. So far it looks okay, nothing's nothing stopped. Let's see if I can connect. All right, so I've connected. So let's see whether I can run this. So if I try to run this as it stands, watch what happens when it gets to this line. See, no module named SSD1306. So we know that the MicroPython build that we get from um, Pimer only doesn't have that module built in. And as that's an Adafruit one, it's not surprising. What I discovered that you can do is if you find the a Pi implementation of this driver, so, such as this one that was created by Adafruit, you can actually save that onto the device. And that's one of the reasons why you should save things onto the device if it's a module you want it to call. To do that, all I do is copy all of that. This is just direct link to the GitHub page. Just copy all of that into my editor. Go back to Sunny, create a new file, paste it in. So I've got the code here. What I'm going to do is save it as SSD1306. So let's do save. Raspberry Pi SSD 1306.py. Let's save that. Now, hopefully, if we go back to the OLED, when we run this, MicroPython will look in its local file store, discover that it's got something called that, and try and import that. So let's try it. Excellent. But let's uh, do that. Okay, so value error what this is. So it's saying that this doesn't exist. Now, I squared C is a bus and you can have multiple devices on it. And each device has got its own little ID. And this is saying, I think, that device minus one doesn't exist. Now, I don't know what the value of that device number is, but let's just try zero. Is it device zero? Don't really know what's going on now. It's a different error. Can't write it. But anyway, maybe it's just because this isn't the right device number. What happens if I change that to one? Bad SCL pin. Ah, notice the problem now. So something's happening on here, but I haven't powered up the display. So let's put that voltage in now. And hopefully if I've got the right pins on here, this might work. Still bad SCL pin. Let's go back to zero. When I've played about with these like these previously, some of the more expensive ones or the less generic ones have pads on the back where you can change its ID or it tells you what its ID is. But this one is the cheapest of the cheap. So you just have it whatever ID it, it gets made with. So I think, though, it might just be that I changed these to use display and not OLED because I've used display for all of them. So seeing a width and a height makes sense. All my other videos, the, the Pimer only library had this in. So let's try again. OK, so you note the deliberate mistake. Very small. Why might that be? Well, the width and the height of this display are slightly wrong. So originally I was using a taller display. So let's change that to, well, the height. I think it's still 128 wide, but let's change the height to 32 and try that. Please subscribe SpiderMath YouTube. Oh, well, relatively simple to set that up. Um, you just got to work out where these pins are and remember to power it up. Quite easy to run an Adafruit library, especially if Adafruit have done a Python version of it to run that on this Pi Pico without having to get it into the Pi Moroni Pico, uh, Pico build. I don't know, just for the want of completeness. Let's just set this up really quickly on the Explorer board as well, just to show you you can do it even though that's on it, it doesn't make any difference. Let's just unplug it first. So there's no reason why this shouldn't work exactly the same. So let's just pop that in. Let's turn it around. Oh, look, it's already accessing that. 
is that going to cause us a problem? Let's just do stop and run. And there you go. There's the instructions, what I would like you to do at the end of this video.